Hey guys, hopefully you can uh, see me there um, and hopefully this is working as it should. Welcome to Easy Way Photography, the very first live event. Tonight we have a 32 image knockout head to head photo competition. Um, before we get into that, a little bit about Easy Way Photography. Easy Way Photography, well actually, it's fair to say that there's two key elements to creating great photos. Obviously, the capture or capturing those in camera and then the finish or the editing and basically easywayphotography.com we specialize in teaching landscape photographers how to get the most out of every single photo um, with some relatively simple straightforward techniques it's a complete photoshop workflow um, yeah so if you feel like uh, your editing skills or your finishing skills require a little bit of improvement then jump over to easywayphotography.com.au okay are we ready i think we can go ahead and get started um let me just screen share the competition with you guys okay here we go and you should now see uh, the screen share of Easy Way Photography, the 32 photo head to head knockout championship round one. Fingers crossed, that's all working well. Okay, let's jump in and check out the first images. Oh, here we go. One second, little glitch there. I was clicking on my Google screen rather than the actual competition screen. Here we go, this one down here. Oh, that's not ideal either. Let's go and figure this out. Just bear with me for a second. Let me refresh that. Okay, one second. Let me just fix this up. Hold on for a second. Always going to be a little bit of a teething problem. I tested this and it worked perfectly, as you'd imagine. Uh, that's what I've done. I went and turned my hard drive off because it was making too much noise and that's where the competition is located. Of course, hang on a second. Okay, so the beauty of live, this is not a recording, this is live. One second and we'll be right into it. Okay, let's see. Here we go, you beauty, hard drive back online, I'm back online, crisis averted. Okay, so round one and the first head-to-head -head match up here. Let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, beautiful image. I'm loving the uh, the beautiful light on those foreground rocks in particular. Nice exposure length as well, not too long. Um, still maintaining a lot of detail in that water. So that's a beautiful start. And the other one, okay, a really vivid, obviously, I guess, a sunrise shot. If it's been captured on the east coast of Australia, which a lot of these images will have been. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's quite a nice image, beautiful color. And I like the inclusion of this little, looks like a photographer, um, over here on the left. That's great. Now, um, yeah, unfortunately you can't make con, uh, comments directly on the link I gave you just quickly. Let's go through that, but you can click through to the YouTube, um, and view it via YouTube. So on that link, if you look down the bottom of the video, you'll see a little YouTube icon. You can click through there and you can make comments via YouTube when you sign in. Okay, so let's go back. So these two images, of these two, both beautiful sunrise images, I think I'm going to give it to this one on the left here as the winner. Now that brings this one to the elimination page. Potential improvements. Um, look, there's a little bit of fringe haloing 
around the subject here and look not a lot more um, there is also a really and I know this is probably natural but there's a real transition between color and no color in the water there and I'm sure that's the reflected color I'm sure that's not a uh, error by the photographer in editing or anything like that but I would have possibly tried to transition or blend that out by maybe just adding a little bit of color into that gap there possibly anyway a couple of little possible improvements there let's click through to the next match okay so I haven't seen these images before I did a quick test run where I fired through as quick as possible without really taking much notice so you're I'm seeing these for the first time as a uh, you guys and spare a thought for the uh, 32 photographers that are sitting at home nervously watching along almost as nervous as I am I guess okay this is a beautiful image uh, beautiful light up on the uh, hill to the left there loving the uh, the length of the exposure here to allow us to see into that water those beautiful little kind of jade green rocks and blue rocks so some wonderful textures some gorgeous light in that image and then we have this rather incredible shot now I recognize this well I semi recognize this as Iceland the peaks here look like Vesterhorn if I'm pronouncing that right I'm probably not um, in the south east of Iceland beautiful black beach with these mountain peaks coming up but I don't remember that road so my first impression is possibly this is a creative composite but I'm not a hundred percent maybe there was a road that I didn't know was there but that being said uh, stunning image I love the the big splash of burnt grass across the middle um, the lack of texture in the sky is uh, quite nice as well really allowing the mountain peaks to be the prominent feature and the fact that there is a really prominent subject also helps okay um these two images i just think the drama and uh impact of the, this one on the right here um, which brings this one to the elimination page and look and not a lot i would change i think potentially this image should be in the second round it's just come up against a very strong opponent in round one so don't be too disappointed at being knocked out in round one it's an excellent image uh, and not a lot to improve there is a little flare up on the hill here um, it's not really distracting all that much from the image so i wouldn't be overly concerned with that and i didn't even notice it when i was um, taking that initial look or i didn't notice it to be distracting in any way let's move on to the next round now I've been told that selecting uh, the YouTube link down in the bottom right corner of the video and watching via YouTube potentially is going to give you a slightly better quality and of course you can interact put comments on there um, and of course subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like as well that'd be nice okay so match three let's take a look Again, another sunset, sunrise shot. I don't recognize the location. I'm loving, I'm loving the, um, the, the color palette. Some beautiful yellows and these beautiful kind of turquoisey blues, greens in the water there. And then this light across this sand dune in the foreground is also quite nice. Long exposure, quite like that as well, simplifies the image. So that's quite a nice image there indeed. Looks like there might be even a, well, I'll take it as a star up there rather than a missing pixel or a hotspot. I'd say it's the first star. And then we have uh, this kind of uh, intimate, more abstract style, you know, long exposure water there with this, you know, little post coming down, a nice left to right composition okay so that's also quite pleasing of these two i'm really leaning towards this colorful uh, sunrise shot so let's put that one through 
this image possible improvement uh well there might be the old little dust spot floating around up there which again oh there's definitely one there again i didn't really notice those initially um but they would be something that i would definitely pick up on uh, I do wonder, as much as I like to see the detail in the water, I wonder with this particular shot whether maybe an extreme long exposure might just simplify a little bit more the subject. Anyway, it's just my opinion. Don't take it too harshly. Um, you know, if you don't agree, that's perfectly okay. Let's move on to the next match. Okay. Nice little sunrise seascape and a single rose. Now, this being the first head-to-head -head knockout competition, I didn't really specify any criteria for the images. So uh, in future, we might uh, potentially specify landscape images only, and then we might even narrow that down to some kind of, you know, challenging kind of themes within landscape at the same time to really mix it up. As we um, as we continue along this live competition theme, assuming of course everyone enjoys this format and we decide to continue doing this. Okay, so as I said, yeah, sunrise shot. It looks like a northern beaches shot. I can't place the beach. It might be Bungan Beach or something like that. Some nice light on the uh, foreground rocks here. Um, yeah, reasonably pleasing image, that's for sure. And then something a little bit different. Kind of a low key studio shot of a rose that's been dusted with water. Um, so that's looking, you know, rather nice, nice light, a um, bit different. Of the, these two, even though it's not a landscape image, I am favoring the single rose in this round. So through that one goes. And this particular image, some possible points of improvement. Now, the first thing that struck me when I zoomed in at 100%, and you guys might be able to see this at home, it feels a little bit soft. Now, I'm not sure whether it's slightly out of focus or whether, in fact, you know, the tripod slightly moved because it is a long exposure. Or the other possibility is it was captured at f22. And F22 has a habit of softening our images for us via something called diffraction. Now, I won't go into what diffraction is, but a great aperture for landscapes generally. I shoot everything at F11. The reason being is because it's potentially the sharpest aperture at which you're still going to get most images in focus from front to back. Okay, most images. Um, F22 is an excellent starting point for landscape photography, absolutely. I used to shoot everything, every single image of mine. When I first started out was at F22, um, but if you're really seeking the ultimate resolution, maybe think about switching down to F11. So again, just a couple of little points. The long exposure is beautiful. The exposure itself is well controlled. Um, but it's just a little soft in the areas where I want to see the detail. Okay. So you'll notice we're getting some, well, I feel like we're getting a couple of really strong matchups here. This has been randomly selected. I just purely randomly assigned numbers to the images. So, you know, something like these two here, potentially, you know, this could be a semi-final matchup, but it's not. It's a first round matchup. So we're going to lose a strong image early on. Okay, beautiful, beautiful colors. There's a nice kind of line, this sort of gully that, that's leading through here. And then we've also got these rocks that are kind of heading in this general direction up to this left-hand peak there. Um, so that's a nice, nice composition, nice moody sky. Very powerful, impactful image. And then we have this panoramic here like with gorgeous light. Look at this light just flashing across these rocks from the left here. Somewhere out of frame on the left, the sun is rising and kind of spraying across the landscape, which is exactly what we're looking for. 
nice bold subject, um, great sky, you know, all the details there. Really well handled indeed. Okay, so of these two, as much as the left hand image really is really striking, I'm going to go with this panoramic, um, just slightly stronger in its finish and potentially that subject as well and the light is what I'm loving. So we'll push that one through. Potential improvement, as I said, it's a striking image. Possibly what I'm finding slightly lets it down is I can see on this back mountain range here that there's kind of a beautiful light spraying onto the left hand side there. Or at least that's what I feel. And the entire image, or what I feel is possibly could be improved, the entire image has almost got the exact same light across it. There's no shadow, there's no kind of light, there's no zone, you know, kind of picked out. And I kind of want, you know, maybe the mountain and the, the you know, this second third of the image here. So this would be the first third, the foreground, and the mid third here. Maybe that could have been highlighted and uh, given some special treatment as the whole image is. And maybe some of the foreground could have been dialed back a little bit just to allow that particular area to shine. That's what I'm kind of thinking. There's a little flary, looks like a raindrop on the lens out here too. So um, I would obviously look at that as well. Moving on. How are we going? Is everything working as it should, I hope so, after that first hiccup where I turned the hard drive off, what a beauty. Um, okay, here we have a couple of other looking like really strong images. Let's zoom in. This one has me already kind of uh, interested before I zoom in, which is a great sign that it's drawing me right in. Now, great atmosphere straight away, great atmosphere, great mood. Great depth. Look at the just incredible depth that we have from front to back of this frame. And that is caused by that mist or the fog throughout this region there or throughout this image. So basically what I'm seeing is you get quite high contrast with the elements close to the camera. And then as we drift to the back, we get very, very low contrast um, towards the back there. Okay, so that's excellent. We have this beautiful little stream drifting through the frame. Gorgeous detail everywhere. Um, really stunning black and white image. This image here has got its work cut out, I think. But again, this one has a lot of atmosphere and a lot of mood. I'm guessing, you know, really wild kind of seas by the, the way the long exposure is kind of crashed over these rocks and created a mist uh, foggy type effect on the top of these rocks. I'm assuming that was captured long exposure style. That's what's creating the fog rather than something else. It could be a sea mist or something else as well, but incredible, um, incredible atmosphere in this image as well. So of these two, again, two images that potentially should both be moving forward, but due to the random nature of the draw, it's not going to happen. I'm going to put through this gorgeous black and white. Okay. And, you know, for this photographer, um, great work. Don't be too disheartened of being um, knocked out early. It's a great image and it, and it potentially should have gone further and deeper into the composition, into the competition. Um, potential improvements. We have a really heavy vignette that stands out on the bottom left corner here. Vignettes are great. The, the, um, my saying about vignettes in photo competitions is judges love vignettes. They just don't like to see them. Okay. So what I mean by that is you really want to feather those kind of heavy vignettes off, but there is no other kind of vignette as such, at least not to that degree around the rest of the image. So it's kind of an unbalanced vignette, which you really want to avoid. Um, apart from that, you know, nice subject, well highlighted and a great exposure. Um, so, you know, keep up the good work for sure. 
Well, here we go. Some ripping images in here, that's for sure. Wow. Gorgeous. Killer sky. You know, I, you know, I love uh, beautiful sunrise, sunset shots as much as the next person, but this one just like, looks like flames kind of flickering off the horizon and reflected just beautifully into the, uh, into the lake there. Stunning. And then we have the classic Camel Rock. You know, it doesn't get much more dramatic than Camel Rock. And a beautiful dramatic sky there. Um, some nice flow. And some really nice framing. Some, some pretty good light as well coming in from the right, giving that light and shadow effect to the rock there. Um, and all the detail, you know, well captured, well exposed, everything is correct. Of these two, I just can't go past this one. Look at the wow factor um, of that thumbnail, you know, before we click in. It's just, you know, it's just drawing me in there. And that's going through to the next round. This one being eliminated, a couple of points of improvement. Um, I, I do find the sky rather distracting, this V in the sky. It's kind of a tonal distraction where we go from, you know, quite low contrast sky. On, on in fact both sides almost into this heavy contrast section of clouds there now quite possibly excuse me that could be um, quite possibly that could be completely natural and I'm assuming that it is however you know that tonal difference in contrast between here and here I find it really distracting even though it is pointing downwards towards the rock kind of leading me in I still do find it distracting. Now, that might only be me. Um, any other improvement? I would play around with the crop a little bit. Uh, I do feel, I wonder whether we need the rocks kind of flicking into the frame in the foreground or whether or not just drawing a crop straight across that flow might simplify the composition a little bit. I'm just not, I'm, I'm not sure unless I tried that myself, but give it a whirl and... Uh, and see what you think. Next matchup. Okay, so I recognize this. I've seen this image before actually. Um, and and I, when I see an image I've seen before, I really try and think back to its first impact. And I love this image the first time I saw it. Huge sea, uh, huge swell down at Curl Curl. I believe it's North Curl Curl. I think it is, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And the waves crash over this pool when there's a huge swell. And what I really love about this, you might not be able to see this at home, hopefully you can, is we have five uh, swimmers or daredevils sort of surfing the crashing waves as they hit. And you can see the middle one is already midair diving to escape. And that's what I just love. They're a bit blurry. There's a bit of motion blur in there, sort of. Um, you know, suggesting movement, uh, and I just love that. And the rest of the exposure is is pretty good too. You know, the the flow in the foreground here, the light on the rocks. Um, there's a lot to like about that one. Okay, and then we have this one here. Uh, beautiful kind of, uh, you know. It could be an Alaskan scene or an Antarctic scene with the kind of the ice flow here, a little bit of ice flow there. And we've got some mountains and rock faces in the background and some moody clouds streaming across the top of those mountain peaks. You know, really nice kind of rusty textures in those rocks. It's quite nice as well. But I just can't go past the storytelling ability of this um storm swell at curl curl on that one so that one's going through and possible points of improvement um look i'm not sure i'm i'm taking it that this is the subject the kind of uh big tabletop mountain structure here on the left so i'm kind of wondering you know could we maybe crop it into a square maybe maybe not um, could we maybe lift up and hit that that kind of section, that orangish section through there, could we hit that with a bit more contrast and make that pop um, and really draw me in? 
Um, I'm just I'm just looking for something with a little bit more wow factor when I kind of flick over and see it. And um, as beautiful as the clouds and the moodiness in the sky are, it didn't really grab me. Um, but that's not to say it wouldn't grab somebody else. Again, it's just my opinion. Let's move on to the next. Okay, again, so we have uh, something that is not a landscape, but that's okay for the time being. I didn't specify completely open competition. A dragonfly perched on the end of uh, that flower stem there. Beautiful color palette with the yellows, reds. You know, they work well. And the background being so super simple is, is just excellent. That's one of the hardest things to do when shooting this kind of macro-y style um, shots is to get the background really simplified and distraction free and the photographer has managed to do that pretty much moving over to the cityscape here what i'm instantly loving about this image is the the color palette and the beautiful bronze tones with the blue tones of the glass so it's really kind of a two-tone or two-color image just bronze tones and those steely blue tones and that's what really draws me to this image. You know, it's just beautiful. Nice detail in all of those buildings. Hint of reflections there. And I think in this case, that one, the cityscape is moving on through. Okay, and now don't be disheartened. Um, again, being knocked out in the first round, there's a couple of things, technical issues here on this image. As I said, it's well captured. It is uh, well seen and great job in getting a detail-free background. There's a couple of issues. There's a strange little darkish blob here. Um, can you see where my mouse is, hopefully, just to the left base of the flower stem? So watch out for that. And then the subject itself, particularly on the uh, back of the dragonfly here, um, there's a quite a bit of fringe haloing. So you can see that. Hopefully you can see that at home. There's a like a one pixel bright border around the subject, okay? So that's something to really avoid in photo competitions. Potentially, you know, maybe the dragonfly is backlit and I've misread that. Um, the flower kind of, there's a little fringe on the flower. That looks like light coming from the left-hand side or the rear left. But the dragonfly itself tends to look to me a little bit like um, just a pure halo there, and I'd look to remove that for sure. Next match. Okay, another couple of rippers here. Interesting composition. I like the way, you know, often we, we place these kind of decks, and I just saw a, um, a sneaky watermark there. I asked everyone to remove those um, that when I found them on the quick review, but I didn't spot that one, so... There you go. There's a little free plug. Never mind. Um, I like the composition with the deck leading in from the right-hand corner, drawing us back to the lane markers here of the pool. That's quite nice. I'm loving the colours again. Some sort of a baby blue and a pink, which both work very well together. Uh, so that's quite nice. And then we have this really nice sand dune, dune, sand dune image. Um, with gorgeous light. Look at the golden tones flowing in from the right-hand side. Um, just beautiful. And the shadows on the left, absolutely gorgeous. What I really like about this composition is we have, um, have this person wandering out into the composition, which is great, and the shadow, I love it. But what I really like is the footsteps start right in the bottom right of the composition and and flow all the way out and I can almost follow the footsteps they disappear here for a little while but I can almost follow them all the way out to the um, subject there the little tiny subject being the person there in the frame now there is a slight uh, error that I can spot in this image as well but we'll uh, go over that later okay of these two I'm going to give it to the sand dune. It's just, it, it's a special image. 
So that means that this one has been eliminated. And again, it's a, it's a really nice image and it, there's not a lot that I can suggest to improve this. I do wonder um, about the crop. I wonder whether this little steel handrail needs to be part of the image. With cropping, you know, I've got a saying, basically, if an element is not directly helping to tell the story that we're trying to tell or communicate, then we need to frame it out, crop it out, or remove it. And I'm wondering whether that little distraction on the edge of the frame there needs to be there at all. I'd be tempted to move in and um, I'll potentially crop just to the left of the number one lane marker there. Yeah, if it was mine, that is. Um, but anyway, it's not. I do love the boat in the background, great addition, and I love the way that the boardwalk leads back to that boat. So that's all great. Just a couple of minor things, great image, and it, again, probably potentially deserves to be in the second round. Okay, here we go. Classic um, Dove Lake up at Cradle Mountain, absolutely gorgeous. I was only just up there recently myself. So I've stood right there. Uh, nearly every photographer that's been there has probably stood right there, of course, which can be um, somewhat of a downside, I guess, in competition sometimes, although the, the Wanaka tree, the famous Wanaka tree, seems to win every second competition. So that doesn't seem to um, hold it back in competitions, the fact that it's a very popular photographic subject. And I guess, you know, potentially if it's a great example of the particular composition, then, um, then it shouldn't be an issue at all. Uh, great subject being the boat shed and, and secondary subject, if you like, or competing subject being Cradle Mount itself in the background. Nice little quick exposure to give that movement or the, the ripples on the water, maintain those ripples on the water. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay. And then we have this one here. Nice little long exposure. I like the clouds there. I'm liking the light on the rocks to the right here. I also like the leading line, if you, if you can call it a leading line. The line running from the bottom left corner, kind of dragging me back into what I'm going to call the subject, which will be this headland here. Um, and some nice kind of, you know, star features on the lights there, which work reasonably well. Of these two images, uh, I'm going to give it to the Dove Lake, which has this one being knocked out in the first round, possible points of improvement. Um, you know, honestly, I'm not sure the lights and the reflection on the water, that distraction is a good thing. I'd be tempted to take this photo when the, you know, as the sun gets a little higher in the sky, whether that be earlier for sunset or um, later for sunrise, when the lights aren't affecting the scene so dramatically. Um, even possibly if this is on the east coast of Australia, a little bit of, you know, sunlight drifting across these features rather than the artificial light might be a nicer, more pleasing image. But, you know, again, just my opinion. Um, and uh, everyone is entitled to throw that away if they, uh, if they disagree, 100%. Okay, another image. I've actually seen this one before too. Um, but obviously, I will judge them completely unbiased on the night. In fact, seeing an image prior to a competition is sometimes a disadvantage or often a disadvantage because a lot of the impact is is taken away because I've seen it before and potentially I know I, I may even know where some of the flaws of the image are not that I can see a great deal here nice image um, the Helensburg tunnel I think beautiful set of glow worms inside the tunnel there and some you know those uh, train tracks leading me right back there so beautiful image And then we have, I believe this is uh, Horseshoe Falls in Tassie. I was just there and, and it looks like this particular person wasn't too far behind me because the conditions when I was there was exactly the same. I didn't have much water flowing off uh, this left-hand section of 
of the waterfalls either. Reasonable light. It looks like it's been taken towards the middle of the day-ish. I'm only guessing that by the spotlighting on these ferns here. It could be wrong, um, but that's okay. It's been reasonably well handled in any case. Nice exposure length. The detail's good. Um, yeah. Of these two, I'm going to give it to the tunnel. There's just a lot more mood, drama, emotion in that one for me. So that's the winner, bringing this one to the elimination. Couple of possible improvements. The first thing that I notice is the, the blurry fern leaves here. Now this can be extraordinarily difficult to get right when you want a long exposure and you want all of the details to be beautifully, you know, perfectly sharp within all of the ferns, which is, you know, in an ideal world, that's what we want. So the way to possibly get around that is to, um, is to take several exposures. One long exposure at say 10 or 20 or 30 seconds for the water. And then another exposure, you know, even maybe lift the ISO up to maybe 400 or something like that and uh, shoot a much faster exposure with no filters and try and capture all those um, beautiful ferns in full detail. And then, of course, blend them together in Photoshop, which, you know, we teach that at easywayphotography.com.au. So, you know, feel free to jump over there and check that out. Let's move over to the next match. Okay. Again, not a traditional landscape, but that is okay. I instantly, you know, I have seen this image before as well. And I love the finish. The finish is absolutely sublime. You can see, you know, someone that really knows what they're doing in editing and processing their work. It's absolutely gorgeous. The tones, the um, the colours, the 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 way that there's that little just hint of kind of texture in the water as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's go back out and check out what it's up against. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it's actually, I, I quite like the treatment of this image, you know, that monotone type treatment, giving it that kind of, you know, old school vintage, almost a sepia tone style effect. I'm quite enjoying that. Great subject. I'm wondering if the subject is perfectly aligned to the middle. It doesn't quite look like that. We'll touch on that later. Um, Okay, so there's two pretty good images there. The winner, in this case, the dolphin. Beautiful image, moving through to the next round. And this image, possible points of improvement. There's a couple, and they're not big things, they're just little things, but they will help the impact of this image, I think. Um, for me, you know, if, we, if I'm going to shoot a jetty, or, you know, this is a, an old dilapidated jetty, I guess. I like to stand right in the middle. I can see the end of the jetty is finishing roughly in the center of the frame, but the start of the jetty is starting off to the right. So we're kind of heading on a slight angle from right to left. Now, I kind of want that to be almost perfectly straight or on a little bit more of an angle so that it, at the moment it kind of feels like the photographer was trying to get it straight, but just missed out by a little bit. That's what it feels like. Couple of other little things too. There's a little bit of vignette, which is darkening of the edges. Okay, and they're not, again, they're just not transitioning softly enough down here. Okay, a little dark patch there. There's also one on the right as well. And then the very last point of improvement, don't get me wrong, it is a, it is a great image. Um, looks like there's a couple of birds that have both been sort of half in frame up the top. So I would, you know, they, as I look around the frame, I hit this little distraction and it drags me out of frame there and we don't really want that to happen. So just bring the crop down a little bit to remove those birds, I would suggest. Let's move on to the next. Okay, another beautiful kind of Alaskan style 
snowy mountain scene here. I'm loving the colors, those powdery blues. Again, I'm loving the, the, the detail of that water in the foreground. It's just beautiful. Little hint of a ripple there, but it looks like almost silk, which is beautiful. Um, nice light on the mountaintop and, you know, no clouds in the sky. Beautiful transitions in those blues. It's actually one of the hardest things to do is to have a beautiful, soft, gradient transition in a clear blue sky like that. Well, it's almost clear. There's a little hint of a wisp of cloud up there, but almost clear. So very well handled. Let's take a look at the other one. Yeah, I like this too. Interesting. Well, nice composition. I Again, I like the way... The, the first wave in the image is drawing me back to, again, what I'm going to call the subject is this headland, which is beautifully lit up by the sunrise or sunset, depending where we are. I'm guessing sunrise. Um, that's really nice. The colours are beautiful. They're not overdone. They're just really beautiful. So it's a well-finished image. Can't fault it too much at all. Okay, let's, let's jump back. So this is a tough one. Which one's going to go through? Real calmness to the blue image. And then the other one's quite dynamic. Look, I'm going to go with the seascape, okay? It's only, it's quite close. I'm going to go with that. Now, again, there's not a lot to improve here, if anything. What it's probably lacking for me is, oh, well, well, it's not even lacking that. I was going to say, you know, a, a subject that really grabs my attention, but you know, it's got that mountain range as a subject. But and, and on another day, this one goes through, and the other one doesn't. Okay, so it's just a fifty-fifty. The way I'm feeling on the day, it's close. There's no real improvement. It's a nice, calm, peaceful image, but at the same time, it 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 doesn't slap me in the face and say, "Look at me," um, when I when I sort of turn it around either okay so you know um great image um but just not not its day today let's move along okay palm beach by the look of it looks like it might be like a tone mapped or a hdr and it's been handled reasonably well um for that style of image um, nice subject there, quite nice light from the sunset there. So, very good. And then we have this one here. Um, so, again, another beautiful sunrise image. We've got a nice kind of line leading back through the rocks here. Um, and some nice flow, some nice colour on the rocks and some nice colour in the sky. So again, a fairly simple image. Let me just go back there. Mm, again, it's quite tough. They're quite close, I feel. Um, I think the composition and the subject of the lighthouse um, have got it slightly over this one here. Just ever so slightly. Whoops, nearly clicked the wrong winner. So this one's going to go through. And this one gets knocked out. Now, well, excuse me, I actually have seen this image before as well. Um, again, it's, it's a beautiful image. There's not a lot to improve at all, really. I mean, it's got great flow. Probably the lack of a, a subject to anchor the image down, like something really strong that could really emphasise the light, you know, and give me that kind of dimensional light on a subject could be really great. Um, that's about all that you can improve on. As an image, it's a great image. Um, maybe not a competition image as such, though. Okay. So straight away, you, you know, you see these two images and you think, wow. In fact, it's the last round of um, round one, match 16 of round one, which is the final round. Okay. So let's take a look. Incredible. Okay, so that's a really strong image straight up. You know, great, great flow over the rocks, great impact um, flow in the center, really moody sky. And, you know, I love the dark foreground as well. So 
loving that and then you've got this astro and it's just gorgeous as well i guess we've got not sure if that's the moon rising between glass house rocks there or maybe a distant light from maybe the lighthouse but i think the lighthouse is more over to the left not a hundred percent there um gorgeous This is a real tough one. I need to like phone a friend or put it to the put it to the crowd and get the answer, but we don't really have that interactive commenting going just yet, but I will look into that as we improve on this format. Oh my, one of these really strong images is going to be left behind. Okay, the winner is the Astro, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll go with the Astro. Um, improvement, not a lot. There's one tiny thing that I did notice, or two tiny, well, three now that I keep scanning the image, but they're not big, they're absolutely tiny. The first one is this bright um, little inclusion in the sky. Now, I know it's natural. But the issue with that is, as I move around the frame, it's all got this beautiful natural kind of vignette darkening to the edge, and then, boom, I hit that light spot, and I'm kind of dragged out of the frame. It's a distraction, in my opinion, that doesn't need to be there. Um, I don't see any relevance to that distraction in the story. So just toning that off might be nice. The next minor improvement is the level of darkness to the left-hand side in comparison to the right. Okay, again, very minor. It just slightly puts the image off balance a little bit. And the third, which is even more minor, but worth mentioning, is there's a little tiny rock inclusion just here. Now, that's picking some tiny details, but again, that doesn't need to be breaking the edge of the frame. Okay, so you really don't want any breaks of frame along the edges. Uh, unless they are contributing to the story. Let's move along. Yeeha, round two. Okay, we got through round one. That seemed to go okay so far. Um, let's jump into round two. It's going to get harder and harder as we move through, and the images condense and get stronger and stronger. Okay, so we can move through a little bit faster now. Um, beautiful. Again, I love, love, you know, as I said in the first time around, love the light on the foreground, you know, beautiful sun crossing across the top of that mountain or island in the, in the background there versus this Icelandic, um, well, it looks like a fantasy image. I'm not 100% sure it could be straight from camera. I don't know. But uh, I really love, uh, one thing I really love about this image is the way the road comes around from the left and continual, you know, sort of gradually goes in an upwards direction and then loops around the right. Now, you know, initially I was kind of wondering, you know, whether that needed to be straightened, but I don't think it does. I quite like the fact that that's rising in elevation as it goes around there. Great mountains, um, as I said, great tones and great processing in this particular image. It's got to go to that Icelandic image there. So what to improve here? Well, you've, you know, well done. You've made round two. So it's been proven as a, you know, a pretty good image. Um, not a lot. You know, if you wanted to, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe a different aperture to really explode that sun into a sun star. It's a little bit cliche, but I think in this scenario, a big, beautiful sun star would look quite nice there. You know, we've got the beginnings of it. And generally, a sun star you'll usually find around the apertures of, say, well, on my camera lenses, not that I use them a lot, but I have in the past, but around about f16 to f22 will usually produce the best sun star effect. Okay, so maybe that might have improved it, but the image is great. Um, possibly you could crop into almost a square a little bit off either side because I think all the good stuff is in this square here, but you know, great image, well done. Match two, round two. 
Again, we talked about these images before, beautiful light and beautiful color palette versus it's kind of low key single rows there with those beautiful droplets. For me, this one's gonna go through, which eliminates this single rows now. I think it's reasonably well done. Some points of improvement. I'm really starting to lose detail of some of the um, leaves in the background here. I, you know, I, I'd like to see, I like the low key, don't get me wrong, but I want to see the detail fade right back to almost nothing. So I kind of want to see the back edges of all of those leaves in shadow, even though they are completely in shadow. I still want to just the hint of the outlines in those shadows just to you know that there's only a couple of things as a judge that we can kind of assess um, the skill of the photographer on and one of them is how the photographer has handled the shadows and look the shadows here have blocked up a bit and i can't see any of the detail of the subject within those shadows so just keeping the the detail within those shadows even if it's just a faint hint of it um, would improve this image. Oh my, what a matchup. Two of my favorites, I guess, from round two. So tough draw for one of these images. Beautiful panoramic, beautiful light. You know, it's you just can't you just can't fault that the light's gorgeous the view's gorgeous the subject's gorgeous and the way it's processed is gorgeous but it's coming up against something that's just chock a block full of atmosphere mood and feeling and you know oh, as hard as it is to leave one of these images behind i think mood and feeling maybe trumps perfection um, you know, if an image makes you feel something, that's what we're trying to do on that level of communication as photographers is try and, you know, take our viewers on a, on a journey. And this image definitely does that. I, look, I'm not saying this image doesn't. I'm just maybe suggesting that it doesn't move me on the same level that this one does. Okay, so unfortunately this image, you know, this panoramic, I'm not sure whose it is, but... It definitely could have been at home in the grand final or in a different draw, maybe. Um, not suggesting that this one's going to make the grand final. It may well do, but um, yeah, this one here is an excellent image. But this one is the winner, meaning that this exceptional image is um, being knocked out in round two. There'll be some people screaming about this for sure because it is an exceptional panoramic image. Um, so don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, enter this by all means. I recommend entering this into the um, Epson Pano Awards, an excellent panoramic photography awards, which are coming up in a couple of months. They've just opened. You know, I highly recommend that this would do well. And I can't even, you know, I can't even really pick too many suggestions to um, improve that. You know, maybe the vignette along the base here might be a little bit too much, so possibly. But it's also probably helping in highlighting the subject beautifully. So, you know, give it a shot there, and I think it'll do really well. And it's a shame that it's going out so early. Okay. Wow, the matchups are getting tough. Here we go. We've got this color bomb, incredible sky. You know, I like the composition. This really, it might be long jetty, I'm not sure. But an incredible long jetty and incredible reflections. You know, in a great stormy sky, really impactful image versus this one. Color versus drama. That's what we've got here. Both relatively good storytelling. I mean, this one's just telling the story of a, a colorful sunrise, sunset. When I say just, I mean, it's not just. It's telling, you know, a very good story of that particular um uh, probably a sunset and we've got this one telling the dramatic story of this storm swell on these daredevils diving into the water look for me and it's a tough this is a tough one as well incredibly tough but i think again the storytelling ability of the north curl curl 
Storm gets the win. Not to suggest that, again, this one could have gone, you know, the colourful one here could have gone much further. Depending on the draw, depending how I feel on the day, I can see that one doing even better. Um, so keep that in mind. Again, it's potential. If you're, again, if we're talking photography awards, um, the Focus Awards, uh, one of the best amateur photography, well, actually not one of the best, the best amateur photography awards in the world, if not definitely the best in Australia, are uh, the Focus Awards organised by the Focus Photography Group. Check that out because they have a sunrise sunset category. And look, I'm not one of the judges, but this could do quite well. Again, as I said, the winner was that dramatic storm swell. Um, we've pretty much been over this, you know, give it a shot in another competition. And I think it could potentially do uh, reasonably well. Moving along. And there's, again, there's no, no huge room for improvement. Again, maybe the, the black dark vignette at the very, very base here um, is maybe a little bit over the top. So maybe just pull back that and maybe pull back this dark cloud a tiny bit, just a tiny bit that could um, improve it on a competition sense for any future competitions. Okay, cityscape, as I said before, love the, the colors within this image, that kind of two tones, the steely blues and the copper tones, gorgeous. And I love, this is exceptional storytelling for me. Um, just beautiful, you know, we've got this wanderer, you know, walking out into the dunes and kind of, you can just imagine, you know, walking out there, gathering your thoughts and kind of taking it all in as the, you know, the sun sets and the, you know, maybe, you know, it's just somewhere where you'd want to be, isn't it? Just out there walking. Uh, beautiful. And again, I think the storytelling ability of the sand dunes takes the cake there. Now, this particular image, um, Look, not a lot to improve. I would definitely look at the crop though. Again, I look around the frame and I ask myself, are all the elements helping to tell this story that the photographer is trying to tell? And for me, I'm, the story is, you know, cityscape and a little bit about the reflections, but mainly about this gorgeous color toning in the city buildings. And I wonder whether this element of dark um, foliage coming in on the bottom right corner is adding to the image and in my opinion no it's not um, so i would look at cropping this you know maybe starting just inside these jetties here on a vertical sense i'm not sure how that would work as we come up through those buildings there we might have to come maybe through that gap of buildings here and then along you know come down to the tree and then take a sharp left and come back along here and again i think you know do we need all the boats and all the left hand edge i think potentially we could again zip up between these buildings and I, and I feel like we might condense the image into all the good stuff. Okay, and that's what we're aiming to do. Just, just show your viewers all the good stuff and, uh, you know, don't worry about the other stuff. Apart from that, excellent image, well processed, well finished, well captured, you know, all those boxes are ticked. Dove Lake, black and white, excellent. Um, and we have this uh, tunnel image here of Helensburg Tunnel with the glowworms. Again, for me, you know, the mood and atmosphere of this nighttime image of the tunnels is just, is just doing the job for me. Um, so let's put that one through. Possible points of improvement. Now for me, and this is not going to be for everyone, but for me, possibly all the good stuff, similar to the last eliminated image, Possibly all the good stuff is is from kind of, you know, from the left edge of Cradle Mountain over to the boat shed. I do wonder whether we need the extra part of the pano. I'm calling it a panoramic. It's probably only just panoramic, um, two to one maybe if that. But, yeah, do we need the extra padding to the left? I, I think maybe not. Um, I do kind of wonder whether I would like to see the external edge of this building finish on the right as well. But apart from that, well captured, you know, well processed. Um, it's a really nice image. 
Here we go. Dolphins. I said before, um, you probably can't pick this up on the screens via YouTube or the link, but you know the finish on this image is exquisite and um, strong subject. There is also, I don't know if you can pick this up, but there's uh, another dolphin. Looks like heading away. I'm not sure if it's heading away or coming in to say hello, but in either case, there's a little secondary element in there, which is really nice to discover as well. Versus this classic seascape, beautiful sun drifting in. That's gorgeous. The light hitting the rocks is gorgeous. Um, the composition is great. And the fact the photographer has gone for an exposure length, which is quite short, maybe half a second or a third of a second, is accentuating the wave movement um, perfectly suits this particular image. Okay. The dolphins for me on this one. Meaning this one is eliminated. Now, excellent image, as I said. I really like it. The light's gorgeous. The subject's great. It's a classic kind of East Coast New South Wales seascape shot. I don't recognise the location, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's not um, in New South Wales, and it is, in fact, somewhere else. But um, beautiful image. Possible points for improvement. Again, similar to the last two eliminated images, I wonder whether we actually need this rock detail on the left and whether or not, you know, a, a crop sort of cutting out the the extreme 25% to the left there might even improve and simplify the image. It's also going to maybe potentially have the crop finish so that this wave draws, you know, perfectly from that mm. left corner there. Yeah, it's a nice image though. Okay, Palm Beach Lighthouse, some big, bold, vivid colours. I'm assuming, I, I might be wrong, but they are from like a HDR style effect. Um, it's been reasonably well handled, as I said, versus this Astro image that managed to break through a big first round uh, image, uh, knock out one of the stronger images in the competition already. Okay, and the winner for me out of these two in the final match of round two, mind you, is going to be the Astro. Eliminating this image, um, well done on making it through to round two. Points of improvement, there's a couple here that I would suggest. I'd like to see the lighthouse itself straightened up, so the warp taken out. Um, and that's, that's, you know, using the warp tool in Photoshop and just stretching this top right corner would probably do the trick to straighten that up without too much fuss. Um, for me, look, the, I'm happy with the yellows and the oranges. They're gorgeous, but the blue, the vivid blue in the sky is a little bit too distracting. I would tone that down a touch. Um, and apart from that, that's probably about it. There is a hint of like a kind of a HDR tone map halo on the dark um, mountains in the background there so that would be something else that I would maybe look at fixing up there okay let's move on so the quarterfinals we're getting there we've been traveling for what almost an hour and we've probably got about five or ten minutes to go not too long now quarterfinals okay so now we're getting some you know some of the super strong images from the competition don't need to talk about this too much. Dramatic, moody, beautiful, beautiful light, well-handled image. And again, this image here, um, gorgeous. Love the colour tones. It's got some nice light. But of these two, again, the winner is going to be this, uh, what I believe to be an Icelandic scene, knocking out this image here. Points of improvement. Oh, look, I don't... Not a lot. It's it's quite a nice image. I love the colours, as I said, the beautiful soft yellows and the soft blues. The light's quite nice. Um, the foreground is quite messy and complex, so maybe look at simplifying your foreground a little bit. I'm, I'm even wondering if you know, wandering over onto these rocks and capturing, you know, just standing in front of this mound might have 
potentially captured something a little bit more simple. Um, yeah, but it, it's a really pleasing image um, that possibly could be could do with a little bit of um, simplification, if that's even a word. Moving on. Here we go. Look at these two bombs. Okay. Excellent storytelling, as I said. Excellent capture of the scene and visual communication on a emotive, atmospheric level. And then we have this one, which is, again, I mentioned before, exceptional storytelling. We even have this big yellow sign. So we've got an image that doesn't have a great deal of colour. It's been well handled. And then we have the no swimming, or no pool closed, it says. And, um, you know, a big extra swimmer there. And I think it says dangerous conditions or hazardous conditions there. So, again, exceptional storytelling. We've got this no swimming sign. The daredevil's out the back there. Incredible image. But which one am I going to pick? I think these two, again, could sit very easily into the grand final. As I said, I have seen this one before. I wonder whether or not, if I hadn't, what the impact might have been. Incredible. What do you guys think? Okay. My heart says that this moody um, one here is the one that I'm going to put through the final. Uh, it's one of those images that I don't really know why. And I can look, I can see some improvement in it as well. Uh, but it's an exceptional image. I'm going to put that through. So that knocks this one out. Um, possible points of improvement. Again, not many. There's a couple of tiny, tiny, tiny little things. I can see the very faintest hint of a halo between the uh, ocean and the sky there. Tell you the truth, I didn't see that until right now when I started, you know, really critically looking for something to pick on. Um, Maybe, uh, I was going to say maybe this little splash of water um, could be a little bit lighter to match the other one, but then it's going to cause a distraction and then I'd probably pick on that and say darken it down. So, you know, you're, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't with that one. So I think that's probably neither here nor there. Excellent flow, excellent image, great storytelling ability. Let's move it along. Wow, okay. Excellent. You know, every time I look at this image, it, it just remains just as strong. It's excellent. And this one is also relatively strong, a lot of mood and atmosphere um, to this image here as well. Excellent image. I think I'm... <laughs> there is a big error that I'm going to mention, whether or not it makes it and wins the competition, and I mentioned then or when it potentially gets knocked out. Um, but see if you can pick that. Can you guys see the error on this particular image at home? I think you probably can, some of you, for sure. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. For the time being, it's still strong enough compositionally. Oh, it's a tough one because the error is a big one. Oh, it's an exceptional image. So it goes through this round now. Can this image be improved? Um, not a great deal. It's an excellent image. Great subject, great mood, great feel. There is a lack of any detail whatsoever, particularly in this patch here. Okay, can you see that mouse moving around? I hope so. But if not, in the top right corner above the, above the um, entrance or the bridge structure in the top of the frame in the top right, there's a lack of detail in those blanks. You can see on the left the detail is well handled. Um, and on the right, it's a little bit dark and I can't see any. That's another something that I want to improve is obviously the visibility of my mouse cursor. So feel free to give me some critique on my live judging as well and tell me what I can improve. Uh, be gentle because it's the first time and I uh, want to do this again. Um, <laughs> but no, be as harsh as you like, I don't mind. But um, feel free to let me know what needs improving. Okay, let's move it along. Some people probably need to get to uh, bed or it's only 8 o'clock. It's all good. Hopefully there's nothing too good on TV that I'm interrupting. 
two, no, another two great images here, of course. Um, gorgeous dolphin shot with those two or three dolphins there. Um, great feeling, great mood, great capture. Versus a really exceptional astro shot. You know, and looks like there's a bit of um, atmospheric glow or a tinge of green. Maybe even, I don't know, it could be uh, the distant um, southern lights even. I'm not all that up to scratch with exactly all those uh, astro phenomena, but there's certainly a tinge of green, which I really like, against the cold blues. And I really, the other thing I like, there might have been some sea mist, and it's given the stars this kind of really cool shimmer. They're not perfectly sharp, although the image is in focus, but they're kind of shimmering, which I really love. Deary me, deary, deary me. Astro. So I can't, that knocks out this really strong image. And look, for me, the photographer is incredible. I know the photographer. Um, she's an incredible artist. And this is, this is certainly an incredible um, image. Now, I know that she sent in three images and I didn't contact her as to which one I was going to put in. I chose the first one she uploaded. And there was another one in there that I thought, oh, geez, I wish that was the first one you uploaded because it was incredible, that whale shot. Um, with its uh, fins out, kind of forming a big cross shape, incredible image. But anyway, maybe you'll throw that in next time. Um, great image, nothing I can see on improving there. Oh, the only tiny thing actually is this little distraction here. Now I know it's a natural feature of the water, but it does kind of jump out and pull me over there. And there's, that feature doesn't exist anywhere else in the entire image, so, you know. I, Again, not a big deal. It wasn't overly distracting at the time. The semi-finals, four images left. Okay. Yep, not much more I can say. We've seen these images already. But we'll have one more quick look anyway. And look, for me, wow. Great vision, great capture, great image. And this one's just mood and it's just something about this. It's, uh, it's really got me quite, um, yeah, it's really got me, it's got me emotionally, this one. It's really quite beautiful indeed. So again, this image really moves me on a much greater level than the Icelandic one. So that is the winner. Potential points of improvement, well, almost none. I, I would like to run a rule across this and make sure the horizon is straight. Now, it could be the road is throwing me out, making this one look higher. And it could be that that's not even actually the horizon at all. Um, well, it certainly looks that way, though. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I might throw that in Photoshop later and just see if I'm seeing things. But um, apart from that, beautifully processed. If it is a composite, it's exceptionally done and great vision. All the elements tie together really well. The vanishing points either side with the main feature in the middle is incredible. And the little yellow posts dotted around perfectly match the color um, palette as well, which is great. Next matchup, semi final number two. Okay, so this one. So the issue I'm seeing with this one is I, I guess you might have seen that, and hopefully I'm not seeing things, but. Um, the horizon definitely looks like it's tilting down to the left, doesn't it? There's definitely more room here than there is here. Definitely. But it's an exceptional image, so it, that might not even cost it in this round, which is the semi-final. Okay, gorgeous Astro. Again, love the colours. A lot to love about it. Um, and moving on so oh, it's really tough look if this horizon is straight this is a this is straight through to the grand final and looking at taking out the competition but can i put through an image into the final that i believe now i haven't checked it but i believe has a wonky horizon i'm not so sure i can 
be funny if this one had a wonky horizon too, but it looks pretty straight to me. Okay, I think, you know, the winner is the Astro. I, I feel this one is visually stronger, but that mistake of the, um, look, I feel it's visually stronger and visually tells a better story. Oh. Now I'm doubting whether, look, you know what? Photography is about storytelling. Let's put it through to the, oh, no, I'll stick with my original. The Astro image is going through. So the biggest mistake here, and, and look, hopefully my eyes aren't wonky and I'm seeing things because I will be absolutely spewing, but this image is incredible. Um, the wonky horizon is what's knocked it out. There are some other slight improvements. So obviously, number one, straighten the horizon. There's some slightly odd tonality going in in the shadows here on the, on the big shadow on the left. I would like to see those shadows or the shadow detail in there a little bit more. And it feels like the shadows might have been blocked up, you know, pure black. And then they've, the photographers tried to lift them up to bring them the detail back, but it's just not there. You know, I expect to see these little wavy lines to go through and it's just not there. Um, Apart from that, as I said, exceptional storytelling, beautiful light. Just watch your um, shadow regions and uh, the horizon for sure. Here we go, the grand final, the very first grand final um, of easywayphotography.com.au. And as I said, um, if, you, if you really feel like um, you're struggling to improve your images and you've got your image captured down pat, the next thing to improve is definitely your processing. And, and that's what we do at Easy Way Photography is improve landscape photographers' processing so that they can maximize the impact from every image. So if you feel like that's something you need, jump over there and check it out. Um, and also, 100% uh, money back guarantee if you don't like it. So just flick me an email and say, hey, look, this is not working out and I'll refund uh, your purchase price of the subscription in full within the first, for, within the first month, the first 30 days. Um, okay, grand final. These are the two images that have made it. They're both exceptional. The Astro is, a, in my opinion, an exceptional um, version or exceptional Astro image. And of course, you've heard me rave on about um, this particular image all day and the mood and the sort of that atmosphere that's been created by that fog. Um, it's got beautiful framing. It really leads me down the, the water, you know, that the small creek there leads me into the background. Um, beautiful detail. The detail's carried right to the back where the, um, you know, where the, the trees kind of fade into low contrast. It's still beautifully and sharp back there, beautiful and sharp. And this astro image, I, I love the, the star shape on what I'm assuming is the moon. I love the, the misty effect on the stars. I think that adds a lot of mood and feeling to this particular image. Um, you know, it's a, a really excellent astro image. I wonder if this was taken with the um, Luke Sharkey and, um, oh, and Jay, Jay, what's Jay's last name? I can't think of Jay's last name. Down at Naruma on their Astro Workshop. If you're into, if you're into Astro, check out uh, Luke Sharkey's Astro Workshops. Uh, Jay Evans with Jay Evans. Uh, those guys are two of the best. And they go down to this region shooting um, Astro images. Okay, so for the winner. Oh, I didn't mention there's a prize. Okay, so... At the moment, the way to enter Easy Way Photography knockout competition is to either be a subscriber at easywayphotography.com.au. They get the priority. And if the first 32 images fill up via the subscribers, we don't go to the backup list. But the backup list is all the members of Easy Way Photography on Facebook. Okay, so uh, this month around being our first month, we had roughly about 24 images, I think, come through via easywayphotography.com.au subscribers and the other eight or nine, or it might have even been 10 in the end, came from Easy Way Photography Facebook members. Okay, so what I'm getting to is um, 
well, number one, join up to Easy Way Photography on Facebook. That's free, and there's a lot of great stuff on there. But number two, there's a great prize here, which I didn't mention, and I should have. The winner, if they are an Easy Way Photography subscriber, will get the course of their choice on the brand new USB Easy Way Photography um, or the Easy Way Photography USB drive. Okay, so I've produced the courses and put them on USB for those people that want to work offline or want to take them away on a long plane trip and study um, Photoshop on the plane, or for people that have you know pretty ordinary internet reception and would rather me post them the entire course on a USB. So that's pretty cool. Send me an email if you're interested in grabbing one of those. So the winner, if they are an Easy Way Photography member, which I'm not sure, will receive their course of choice on the USB stick, the brand new USB stick. And if the winner isn't an Easy Way Photography member, they now will be. I'll give them, again, their course of choice, a free 12-month subscription. That being said, the winner of the very first 32 photo head-to-head -head knockout competition is this one here. Okay, it's just gorgeous. Okay, one of those images, as soon as it turned around, um, it just took my breath away, the, the depth. And look, there is no real subject. I'm, I'm always telling people, include a subject, include a subject, include a subject. Um, there's a couple of sort of minor ones that are all playing their part, the stream, the fern on the right, the framing on the left, the gum tree to the left, and of course the beautiful depth created by that misty fog there. Okay, so that's all, that's an incredible image. In saying that, the other image, the Astro here, absolutely gorgeous too. Um, actually, can I go back? Will it let me? No, I, I was going to suggest an improvement, but look, my suggestion and, and, you know, throw it out the window, it's probably not worth its weight at all. I was going to suggest we could probably just take a little bit off the right-hand side. This dark area on the right here probably doesn't need to be as big or prominent. So I'd be tempted to just trim up you know, maybe just inside that tree there. Okay, let's move on to this one. Congratulations on the grand final. Um, going out in the very final round, the image is incredible. Again, I just love the colours, I love the mood, it's got great atmosphere, and it's an excellent um, example of, an, of a well-captured astro image. I'm hoping we're going out to Uluru just uh, next week or so. I'm hoping that we can get some beautiful astro conditions out there for everyone on the workshop should be pretty special. Um, and look, we might even do a, a photo comp while we're out there too. Probably won't be live though. Um, okay, points of improvement. Waffling on a little bit. I, I do wonder on this image, again, condensing the image to all the good stuff, do we need all this foreground? Like one third of the image or so is foreground, but there's not a lot in there that really suggests that, you know, I would want to keep that within the frame. I think, you know, just holding my hand up and about, you know, taking about three quarters of the foreground out um, and just cropping up under that moon star there. And I, for me, I feel the image gets even stronger um, by condensing into just the good stuff. Again, all of these opinions on here are just my opinion. I'm, you know, I'm just offering what I might think might work a little bit better. And hopefully you guys have found some good, um, good tips throughout. Let's just skip through here. There's the um, results page with the thumbnails. Um, very difficult to see, I'm sure. So let's move to the next page, which is the list of the matches. So you can now, well, even I can go through. Who was the winner? Anne Wharton. Okay, so congratulations, Anne. Incredible image. I just love that image. Okay, and Terry Boyd. There we go. Terry Boyd um, was the grand final. Um, uh, the other grand finalist that was knocked out in the last round, Terry Boyd. So you can go through there, take a look at who you knocked out. Um, there's some real quality photographers in there, that's for sure. Uh, whoever got Kath Sally as scalp, uh, you know, that's a big name to knock off. Uh, runner up in the International Landscape Photographer of the Year was this year, Kath Sally. Incredible, one of my favourite Australian photographers for sure. A lot of other great names in there as well. So. Yeah, I hope this has been a success. I hope you could hear me okay. I hope you could see the images okay. 
I'm sorry about the little glitch at the start when I turned off the feed and didn't realize that was a ripper, but we managed to get around that pretty quickly. This, of course, um, jump over onto the YouTube channel and click subscribe because I've decided to make this video replay available to the public for at least a little while anyway. So that'll, I'll switch that over to public sometime tonight and you can, you know, you can zoom through and, and take some notes if you like or, or whatever you like. So jump on, click subscribe. I've got some other cool videos that I'll be putting on um, over the next month or two. Thanks again for watching along. Um, and I look forward to, you know, seeing you again at the, and I look forward to seeing you at the next live broadcast. We're going to be doing a lot of cool things like um, presentations, more competitions, question and answers, and even live edits. So keep your eye out for that. Um, they're advertised either at easywayphotography.com.au or at the Easy Way Facebook page. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.